So you talked about defining value a short while ago, and we've also talked about and touched upon real-world evidence. Right. And can you put those two together and talk about how we can use real-world evidence to define sure. value? In a broad sense, value means what we're getting for what we spend. And you could think about it as the outcomes achieved for the costs that are being incurred. Um, and then that, if we could define on that broad definition, if we could agree on that broad definition, it begs a question of how are we defining outcomes? How are we defining costs? And this is where the value frameworks have tried to come up with some methodologies. But no easy answers. How do you define uh, outcomes, health outcomes? We have certain metrics. The quality adjusted life year, the quality is one. It gives you a standard benchmark for measuring value. But qualities have been criticized over the years uh, on different grounds. They don't capture everything that patients care about. They potentially discriminate against people who are disabled or old. Um, and, and probably other, you know, they're not sensitive to changes, important but difficult perhaps to detect changes in symptoms and disease that people care about, on and on. On the other hand, they have some real strengths. Mm -hmm. They give you a standard um, for comparison. They combine morbid mor morbidity and mortality. And I think the best way to think about a quality or a cost per quality ratio as an input into value is it's a starting point, an important starting point for a very difficult, complicated, important discussion about value. And there are other metrics, I should also add, quality of life of patients. Um, there are lots of um, other ways to measure the intensity of pain or the uh, ability to walk or you know, how bothered I am by a symptom. Those are all inputs also into these difficult decisions. Do you see qualities becoming common use in the U.S.? You often hear that payers, particularly private payers in the U.S., don't like qualities. They don't buy qualities. They don't keep these patients for the lifetime and qualities. don't have to, but tend to measure uh, health benefits for the longer time horizons. I do see them becoming more... Um, used here. We see that with ICER. ICER is using cost per quality information and they certainly consider other information but cost per quality forms a kind of a core of their value assessment and I think um, we're seeing some certainly visibility and some use of the ICER frameworks in the payer decisions and I think that will continue e even as these you know criticisms of qualities will, will also continue.